and welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and as promised, it's time for a Tuesday tip on culturing Daphnia, or the water flea. In the past, I've struggled with keeping Daphnia, but I think after reading a few more articles, I finally figured it out. They're a really tiny little crustacean that are exceptional for feeding the little tiny fish that I like to keep in, in my fish room. They're great for fry of all types, and can really be useful, especially if you have small prey-driven fish. The other thing that's nice is since they're a freshwater crustacean, they live in your tank. They're not like, like baby brine or something that will not survive for long in the fresh water. You can find Daphnia in high concentrations in all sorts of bodies of water. They'll even reproduce in sewage. That You can find them in areas that have super high flow to almost no flow, and that's because they can synthesize hemoglobin, so they don't require an active oxygen transport for in order to survive. Kind of cool. Also kind of disgusting. In fact, in aquaculture, they often will feed their Daphnia cultures manure or sewage in order to maintain them. When I was first starting with Daphne, a hobbyist would tell me that they would throw in dead animals. I prefer to do things a little differently. I feed my Daphne cultures yeast, and sometimes yeast mixed with spirulina powder. I feel like this gives them um, a nice healthy diet that's good for my fish, and it's not disgusting. Daphne are really fascinating. They have a very short life cycle. They can reproduce after only four to seven days of age. Each female can have anywhere from 4 to 22 baby Daphnia. So you can see how you could easily get a booming colony very quickly if maintained properly. However, it is very easy for the colony to sort of reach a critical mass where it'll crash out because of oversaturation of the Daphnia. With this particular type of Daphnia, that is 19,000 Daphnia per gallon. That's a lot of Daphnia. I purchased this from my friend Frank at Aquatic Life Farm. Uh, he's a member of my local club and I'm so grateful that he is such a Daphnia wizard. The, th the other thing that's really cool about Daphnia is that their protein content is basically 50% of their dry weight, so they're a very healthy food for any uh, omnivorous or micro predator fish. I have set up a 20 gallon tank mainly because that's what I had open after I bought these cultures. You can do as small as a 10 gallon. I find that more volume works in your favor especially with how fast they reproduce. This tank happens to have a bunch of guppy grass in it. I've also found in my experience that providing um, sort of levels for the Daphnia seems to help. There's also a few other tips that I'll go over in a few minutes. Another thing to consider is that you don't want to use metal containers unless they're stainless. For some reason, Daphnia just do not do well in those. Baby pools work well, fish tanks work well, you can do it in a bucket. There's various strategies. I do a direct culture method, meaning I feed and culture my Daphnia from the same tank. There's also indirect culture methods where you can set up um, a partitioned tank above for the food to go into the Daphnia and then a tank below for you to culture the Daphnia out. That's just too much for me, so I stick with this direct method. It's recommended to keep diffuse lighting. I seem to do fine with the amount of lighting I have on this tank, but again, I have a lot of plant matter in the tank which provides some areas of cover for them. The other thing is, is that if you're going to use aeration, you don't want to use super fine bubbles. According to the University of Florida, if you use super fine bubble output, it can actually get trapped under the carapace of the Daphnia, which makes them stuck at the surface, which can kill them. So I'm using a, a coarse bubble output and just a sponge filter in this tank. The other thing to consider with Daphnia is they're exceptionally sensitive to any kind of metals. Um, including safe levels that can be found in your tap water. So you would want to dechlorinate the water and you may want to age the water for at least a day before using it for a water change. You should maintain your Daphnia culture similar to your aquarium doing 10 to 20 percent water change weekly. I like to save water from an established tank to do my Daphnia water changes. So how do we maintain one of these cultures? How do we know when to feed one? There's a few different ways. Uh, generally, I feed every other day and I feed a mix of yeast predominantly and sometimes I'll put in spirulina powder at a two part yeast to one part spirulina powder. Uh, the recommended dosing for food is generally about an eighth 
of a teaspoon per 20 gallons. Um, I put in very little, and I'll show you in a minute how to gauge better how much to feed. The first time I started feeding these, I was getting way too much yeast. So what you want to do is you want to get some hot water. I've got a little adorable shot glass here with some yeast in it, um, just regular activated baking yeast. I'll pour my hot water in. And all I'm trying to do is, if you're a baker, you already know about this, but all I'm trying to do is proof my yeast, um, which means make it bubbly and activated. And I'm using my trusty chopstick, if you remember that, from my maintaining my small tanks. This thing's really versatile. And I'll just mix up the yeast. And then I'll let it sit for about 10 to 30 minutes just for it to finish activating. And we'll, you, I'll show you, um, it'll get a very thick bubble on the surface. And that's, that's how you know that the yeast is fully proofed. So after that's fully proofed, I'll pour it slowly into my aquarium, which I'll show you guys. And once the water is good and cloudy, I have enough and I'll stop pouring. Um, in the days in between feeding, <clears throat> I will stir the tank to suspend any food that's possibly on the bottom. And as soon as the water is completely clear, I feed it again. It's very easy. In the past, I really struggled keeping these guys alive. I think I was starving them to death. They can also process green water really well, so that's an alternative food, although I found that they ate it so quickly that I, I couldn't keep cultures up to feed them this way. I've really had the best success using yeast. Now, harvesting Daphnia is also pretty darn simple. You just want to get a fine net, uh, like a brine shrimp net, and gently swirl it through the water and collect your Daphnia. So I'm going to use this small net. You just gently swirl through. You don't want to crush the Daphnia. I've collected some, and I'll drop it here into this rhinogobius tank. Now, if I were collecting to feed the whole fish room, I would um, grab some water and add it to a dip and pour or specimen container, and then use probably a turkey baster to feed into different tanks. That way I can avoid cross-contamination. But you can see, I'm not sure if you can see or not, but in this tank, these little prey-driven fish are going absolutely bananas for this Daphnia. So here is my Daphnia culture. You can see them moving around really erratically and briskly, uh, utilizing their antenna for locomotion. It's really pretty cool and it's really awesome for enticing fish to eat. When Daphne are healthy, they should have that nice pink color that you see in these. So my yeast has proofed. You can see it's nice and bubbly and milky in consistency. I'm going to add it to the tank now. And I'm going to do it in increments so that it can disperse through the water so I can see when I've added enough. You can see how milky it makes it. Um, in, when they're fed properly, you'll be just barely able to see into the water. So as you can see, the tank is getting really cloudy and this is what we want. This means that all of the food, this yeast is suspended throughout the water column in order for the Daphnia to be able to eat them. If you look closely, even though it's cloudy, you can see the Daphnia still actively feeding and darting around. So this is how much I feed my Daphnia tank so that it looks cloudy like that. Now, if you were to be utilizing spirulina powder as well, it would have a greenish tinge to it. So you can see while we can still see into the tank, it is definitely not easy. This is how I like to feed my Daphnia cultures. This is how I know that there's enough food suspended throughout the entire water column that they can all eat. And again, it's ready to be fed again as soon as the water is clear. Generally, in between feedings, I do stir up the bottom where some of this stuff will settle 
in order to resuspend any food that hadn't been eaten. And that also helps maintain the water quality. Thanks for watching and I hope that that explanation of culturing Daphnia helps you have better success than I had when I was starting in this hobby. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, newsjinx.com, where you can see my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things now.